here to speak to you about how the current housing crisis is impacting healthcare from the perspective of nursing students. In particular, I'd like to shed some light on how the unique housing challenges faced by nursing students and how these issues may impact the healthcare system moving forward. The link between housing and health is doc well documented in terms of examining healthy housing as a social determinant of health. Affordable housing is the cornerstone of healthy communities. A fact I think most of us understand as evidenced by our attendance here today. But I'd like to talk today about how the current housing crisis is impacting nursing students as they come into the profession and contributing to our healthcare, healthcare staffing crisis and increasingly costing our health care system money. For nursing students in Victoria, the high cost of living, inflation, and housing shortages, coupled with high tuition and at times working 40 or more unpaid hours per week in practicums, have made nursing school a particularly hostile learning environment in the current climate, especially for students who don't have financial security nets. These factors limit accessibility to nursing programs for many marginalized populations and result in the decreased diversity in our nursing workforce. Nurses serve a diverse population, and diversity in our workforce is essential to providing equitable care to all members of our community. Affordable housing is an integral part of this equation. My own experience exemplifies the role that affordable housing can have in making educational programs more accessible. I'm a mom of two, and I'm acutely aware of the privilege that I hold in living in a housing cooperative, one of the few affordable housing options in Victoria. Without the secure, flexible, and affordable housing option, it is unlikely that I would have made the decision to go back to school as a single parent four years ago. Additionally, my housing community has been a huge resource for resiliency for me that has supported me through this demanding program during a global pandemic, offering financial security and social supports in a period of immense uncertainty. Unfortunately, my story is not the norm. Two weeks ago, I sent out a survey to my fellow nursing students at Kamosan and UBIT. The survey asked about current housing costs, financial resources, and adverse experiences related to housing. I also asked if they plan on staying and working in Victoria post-graduation, and how much that decision was influenced by the affordability and availability of housing in Victoria. Quite honestly, I was shocked, but not surprised by many other responses. While some students had family support while in school, the overwhelming majority were paying an average of $1,200 per month in rent and utilities, with many paying $1,600 or more per month. Over half of the students reported having difficulty finding housing, with a small but not insignificant number of students experiencing homelessness at some point during the nursing program, relying on living in hotels, couch surfing, or living in their vehicle while attending school. 20% of the students had to delay their education or felt they may not be able to finish the program as a result of housing issues. Several students discussed living in unsafe housing, dealing with mold and flooding, while others opted for safer, more costly housing, putting them in precarious financial situations. This is evidenced by over half of the students reporting having difficulty affording food. One third stated they were unable to pay bills or rent at one or more points during the program. And one student even faced eviction. Even though 70% of the survey respondents received student loans, the overwhelming majority of the students relied on employment income while working while in school to make ends meet. These students worked an average of 15 hours per week, with many working more than 24 hours per week on top of their full course load. In the final years of our nursing uh, program, students are expected to complete unpaid practicums that require us to work 30 to 48 hours of unpaid labor. These occur in hospitals or community settings for up to 12 weeks at a time. Shifts are between 8 and 12 hours in length that may occur any time of day or night, weekdays, holidays, or weekends. Factor in additional time for written assignments, research, and simulation. This leaves little time for students to work in paid positions in order to meet their financial needs. Some have adopted the term practicum poverty to describe the resulting financial hardships that many students face. It's not hard to imagine why many nursing students experience burnout before we even enter the workforce, and, when, and why, few, why new nursing grads leave their jobs at higher rates than any other group in the profession. Housing is also part of the decision-making process for students as they enter the workforce. When asked if they plan to stay and work in Victoria after graduation, nearly two-thirds of the students that responded reported that they were either unsure or planned to leave. Regarding how much that decision was influenced by the housing situation in Victoria, on a scale of one to five, the average response was four, or a lot. These results indicate that if we plan to produce and retain an adequate healthcare workforce here in Victoria, we need to address our housing crisis. Hospital staffing shortages fill our news feeds with call for increased seats in nursing programs to meet the current and future staffing needs. However, these increased seats will do little to address our staffing crisis if we cannot retain our newly graduated nurses. Our healthcare system is increasingly relying on agency nurses to fill staffing gaps within our hospital. For those unfamiliar
familiar agency or travel nurses work for privatized companies who supplied nursing staff to health authorities on short-term contracts. These privatized agencies often offer incentives such as paid travel expenses and housing fees for staff. As you can imagine, these services come at a premium price to our healthcare system. Nurses are increasingly turning to privatized nursing as an appealing option, offering greater flexibility, higher wages, and not to mention housing incentives that are extremely appealing given the current state of housing in Victoria. In August, CTV reported that in 2018-2019, BC Health Authority spent a total of $8.7 million hiring such nurses. In 2021-2022, that number skyrocketed more than sevenfold to $64 million. And Island Health accounted for more than $20 million of that total, more than any other health authority in British Columbia. Not only are our public health care dollars going to privatize for-profit staffing agencies, but then they are then being used to foot the bill for inflated short-term housing fees in the current market. While I'm well aware that there are many other complex factors involved in supporting an adequate and cost-effective health care workforce, the role of affordable housing cannot be overlooked. If we are to produce and retain a sustainable and diverse health care workforce, we need a sustainable housing plan that supports and maintains secure, affordable housing options for health care workers at all stages of their education and employment. A failure to do so comes at a great cost to our healthcare system, and ultimately it's the population that we serve that pays the greatest price. Thank you.